Nicole Wilkins with Fitness RX for Women. This is the next question and answer segment where I took your questions from Facebook and I'm going to answer them for you today. The first question is Would you recommend any supplements before doing morning cardio on an empty stomach? If you're going to do morning cardio fasted, uh, take some branch chain amino acids or a protein shake beforehand just so that you stave off muscle being burned um, while you're doing your cardio. Also, if you wanted to take some caffeine, so drink some coffee at that point, you could also try a fat burner if you wanted to, to increase your energy in the morning. Um, so those are the supplements that I would recommend if you wanted to. The next question is, would you say that going to the gym with a male training partner and training together is a good idea, or should women make another workout program other than guys? Any special advice how a split is possible to satisfy both needs of weight training? Well, this all depends on what each individual's goal is. If you're both trying to work out and gain muscle, then you definitely can work out together. It's with a partner, if you're trying to gain muscle, uh, if it's a male and a female, you'll just have to make adjustments to the weight, but you can have the same workout split. So you could do, you know, legs together one day, back and shoulders, or back and biceps together one day, etc. Um, if you're trying to lose body fat and the other person's trying to gain muscle, it may be a little bit more tricky because the person who's trying to just kind of stay a little smaller, maybe maintain, will move a little bit faster and rest less than somebody who's trying to gain muscle where their rest between sets may be a little longer. Um, so you'll have to kind of figure out where each other's goals are and in that case I mean, I've worked out with a partner who was trying to build muscle, and at the time I was trying to lose body fat, so I would do a set with them, and while they were doing a set, I would do something in between, so that way my rest periods would be shorter, but we would still be working out together, so that's also an option. The next question is, do you recommend high-intensity interval training on a stationary bike before or after weight training, or on non-training days, and for how long? Well, uh, as far as high intensity interval training, if you're doing it on a stationary bike, I wouldn't really recommend doing it on a recumbent bike because it's basically like a lounge chair. <laughs> it's really hard to get your heart rate up high enough. If you're doing it on a spinning bike, that's something totally different. Or an upright bike where you can pedal a lot faster and use your body and your body weight. In that case, I would do high intensity interval training after your workout because it requires a lot of energy or at a separate time. On non-training days you could also do it and I wouldn't really recommend doing high intensity interval training longer than 30 minutes at a time. If you're doing it right it should be very difficult. Um, your high intensity interval should be no longer than you know 30 seconds to a minute because you're pushing as hard as you can. So it's really hard to do something like that for a complete hour unless the, in, the intensity of the intervals is a little less. Do you include dairy in your diet? If so, how much? If not, what are your reasons? I actually don't include a lot of dairy in my diet. Um, I really try to eliminate as much sugar as I can and also I think I'm uh, slightly lactose intolerant. There are people who can or who like to include dairy in their diet and that's totally fine. You know, Low fat dairy is a great source of calcium and potassium and it also has protein. So if you wanted to have low-fat cottage cheese before bed, it's a great source of protein and it's also very slow digesting so it'll keep you satisfied a little longer. Uh, there's nothing wrong with incorporating dairy, um, but just make sure, again, it's in moderation because lactose is a form of sugar. And the last question is, how can you tell if you're overtraining and should take more than one day off? This is a really great question. Uh, some signs that you're overtraining are if you are lacking motivation to get to the gym, if you are having trouble sleeping, maybe you don't have much of an appetite, uh, your heart rate is already very elevated before you even start, if, um, or if it's taking you a long time to get your heart rate higher. Also, if you are really sore and not recovering well, um, if you feel like your body's kind of beat up, those are usually signs that you're overtraining and it's okay to take a day or two off if you need to. Um, instead of doing something really hard, maybe back it down a little bit and just do something more moderate. And then, you know, just really listen to your body. 
Epsom salt baths are great for recovery. So if you have if you have really sore muscles, um, Epsom salt can be found at any gr any drugstore. You just add it to your bath and just soak in it. So um, yes, be aware of overtraining. It's it's definitely possible, and uh, don't be afraid to take more than one day off if necessary. So those are my questions for this week and my answers. Keep asking your questions on Facebook. Keep living the fit life, and I'll see you guys next week.